Now back to our lead story, where President Donald Trump has expressed optimism about a potential trade deal with China, saying the deal could very well happen. But even as China's vice premier is set to visit Washington for more talks a week from now, reports claim there has been little to no progress on several key issues. Among them, Americans' claims of intellectual property theft and copyright violations. But as Beijing demonstrated with an unprecedented offer to draw its trade surplus with the U.S. down to zero, there might still be room for compromise. Joining me now for more on this, our former U.S. Trade Representative Steve Gill and RT's very own Bart Chilton, host of Boom Bust and a former Commodities Trading Commissioner. Thanks for joining me, gentlemen. Thanks, Scotty. Okay, so Steve, I'm going to start off with you. President Trump said over the weekend that if a deal is made with China, we could see tariffs undone. But he pointed out that with no deals, sanctions will remain. Are these tariffs putting the U.S. in a stronger negotiating position? Well, I think it, when you've got a, a tough negotiation going on, it is definitely putting the U.S. in a better position than we've been in the past. I think what uh, we've talked about here for a while is that the devil is always in the details, and it's good for both sides to kind of make it uh, clear that they want to reach a deal. The question is, what is that deal going to impose? And as you mentioned at the outset, the, the fact of protecting U.S. intellectual property has been a sticking point with the Chinese from the very beginning. It still is apparently a sticking point, and we're not going to reach a resolution on tariffs or agricultural sales into China until there is some movement on dealing with the intellectual property issue. Well, that's the thing, Steve. Doesn't it mean, though, at first to say that there's a problem with it means that China is basically admitting, yes, we're doing that. And we, that's, a, that's a huge admission of guilt there. Do you actually think they will come to that conclusion? Well, I don't think anybody can deny that they've been doing it. It's been uh, pretty clear for a while. I think what's hampering things right now is that the Chinese economy is starting to slow. Now, you know, it's, it's slipping down to only double the gross domestic product of what the United States has seen. So it's not a disaster level. But they're trying to figure out how to make sure that this tariff fight doesn't slow their domestic economy, doesn't hurt them more than it should. And anytime you're trying to see an economy that's slowing, you want to bring it in for a slow landing and not have sort of an aircraft carrier landing where you're caught by a tail hook. They're trying to move things slowly and softly to a landing as their economy slows. And they see, I think, that the situation with the U.S. may uh, create that aircraft carrier li landing if they're not careful. Well, speaking of landing, China's vice premier will be landing here in Washington at the end of this month, Bart. Is this a promising step, do you think, with the negotiations going on with China, the fact that they're coming over here and meeting with us, Bart? Uh, it, well, it's promising that they're meeting, Scotty. Uh, but, you know, the, like you're saying, I mean, the, the, the devil is in the details. I may have one little disagreement. Generally, I agree with, you know, what's been said. But uh, I do think that they might uh, enter into some uh, more cosmetic deal. You know, they already agreed, the Chinese, to buy more beans. They're buying more LNG, natural gas. Uh, I could see, and, and last time we spoke, uh, Scotty, we talked about sort of the short-term uh, view with, you know, elections in the U.S. and the long 50, 100-year plan of the Chinese. I think that is also weighing on the U.S. And uh, so I think that it's possible the Chinese may offer some deal where they agree to buy more beans, uh, more LNG, et cetera. Uh, and the president, uh, President Trump, sort of takes that as a win, as a cosmetic win, but doesn't get to the nuts and bolts of forced technology transfer, the IP that you've been speaking about, uh, which is inherent in their system. And that's the 800-pound gorilla here. That's the one. And by the way, a lot of these businesses that still, you know, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and others, they're still not fully on board with all these tariffs, but they do see the IP as a real issue. Issue. So if all that we get is cosmetics, going to buy some more beans, going to buy some more LNG, I'm not sure that's going to make the business community very pleased, even though it may be an optical victory for the president, at least in the short term. That's the thing, Bart. You know, we talk about intellectual property, and as you brought up one other, there's got to be other sticking points that are holding this up for something this grand of a scale that's having this kind of an impact, both positive and negative, but mainly negative, on the Chinese economy as well as our economy here at home. What are some of those other points that might not necessarily be in the headlines that we're missing? Well, the, it, the, there's this thing called the Intellectual uh, Property Administration. It's part of the, the, the Ministry of Commerce there in China, and they're actually trying to redo that law. It does deal with IP, uh, but it's how they will change the law. Because now if you want to do business, if you're Apple or anybody else, any big company, you go to China, well, they do a joint venture with you. It's not Apple 
uh, over there by itself is a joint venture, and when they do the joint venture, then that technology is forcibly, by nature of having the joint venture, transferred to the Chinese. And it, it may be used for all sorts of things, so uh, including national security. Uh, so this is a problem, not just from an economic perspective from the U.S. side, but from a national security perspective, too. Uh, and we haven't done enough on it. We did uh, talk, I think you may have talked about it last week, we did in our program about the investigation into Huawei, the uh, Chinese tech firm uh, for uh, dealing in uh, essentially technological espionage. So uh, that investigation continues. But these are deep-seated issues that are going to take a long time. And uh, I just hope that we get to the real thing, the real deal, as opposed to just something that's cosmetic for public consumption in the U.S. Well Barr brings up a great point, Steve, and I want to end it with this. You know, he brings up the point of national security to where those sorts of talks can also kind of filter over to the trade talks. How much of a cooperation is going on? Because it seems like every time we take two steps forward economically with some sort of trade deal, we take two steps back in regards to national security and dealing with something on a foreign policy standpoint. So, Steve, bring it all back in together. How much can the two of them go in hand in hand together? And can we actually see a deal being done across the board with both? I think there can be a deal reached, but I think Bart is exactly right. There are a lot of other complexities that are affecting this, and I know administrations can walk and chew gum at the same time, but the President uh, Trump is having to deal with negotiations with North Korea at this point. As uh, Bart mentioned, you've got the Huawei situation and, and, and that complicating things. The government shutdown in the United States has delayed the President's trip to Davos, where he was expected to meet with President Xi of China. So there are a lot of other world events that are making this an even more complex deal in addition to, again, the devil being in the details of trying to satisfy not only the business interest in the U.S. on intellectual property and, and forced uh, uh, transfer of, of other uh, uh, assets, you've also got other world events that are making this even more difficult, despite, I think, having two willing partners in China and the U.S. looking for a deal. Well, Steve Barr, thank you for helping us dive into those details. We appreciate it. Thanks, Scotty.